And but I yeah, if, but if he is capable of that, then he's fully capable of it still today. Mm. Well, yeah, but I don't think that that would make sense with the with the, with the order of the way the Bible goes. Because remember, God gave people the Holy Spirit as a temporary form for a temporary time, mm-hmm. right? That was like, mm-hmm. well, you know, we're talking about like the time where God gave people the Holy Spirit before there was the command to get baptized and everything like that. Like Pentecost? What? No? I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. And it's like mm-hmm. once all the Gospels, I guess, were like kind of distributed. You kind of saw. Most of it came out during Acts. So. I do. That's what we're talking about the Bible study. Hmm. Where they were saying they were only given the Holy Spirit through God without being baptized for a time. Mm-hmm. Which Bible study? Okay, so we're in the house. We're in the house. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so Joseph, um, mm-hmm. although I don't agree with you, I don't think baptism was work because you're not like, you, you're still doing other things to be saved. Uh, let's just read what the Bible has to say about what, what did you do? Real quickly. Um, at least with the Ephesian scripture, one thing that you gotta take note is what was the context. A lot of the time, the Jew and the Je- I mean, Jews and Gentiles were fighting against each other, saying that, "Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing that," and that's what they were fighting against. Not so much of, "Oh, what was your participation?" It was, "A, hey, what kind of stuff are the Jews doing? What kind of stuff are the Gentiles doing?" Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the context where he's talking about in Ephesians two. But all I'm trying to say is that in baptism. That is not where the, the cleansing of your sins comes from. So then what does Acts 2 stand for? Acts 2 what? Acts 2, 38. 37 through 40. There you go. This is also the same guy that is talking in 1 Peter. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will call. Honestly, we don't need to keep going. So what do you think that's for? For the forgiveness of your sins. This is not that far off after the death of Christ. Right, that's a good point. Yeah, that's only... Chapter 2 of Acts. Mm-hmm. In fact, this is one of the few times in the Bible where they give a straightforward answer. Okay, we'll go to Romans 6 later. Romans 6. We can go through it right now. You don't want to dwell on this more? It kind of, it kind of talks about the different steps that you need to take before baptism. I guess that, that's important. Yeah, go ahead. Do it. Elaborate. Six, verse one. No, no, no. What? Not yet. yet. Which one? <laughs> the one we just did, Acts two. No. Oh. Let me see. All right. So thirty in verse thirty-seven talks about how they were they were cut to the heart. It's like it's like a change in their heart, you know. So it made. Like they already believed in in God. I guess they didn't they didn't believe in Jesus yet. But I, I feel like this changed their heart because um, the context of this I don't feel like explaining it. But um, this is this is after this is obviously after the crucifixion of of Jesus and after he came back. And I think it's Peter who's who's telling all of these um, Jews that it was them that put Jesus Christ you know, on the cross, and, that's, and he had to die for their sins. And, you know, after explaining this to them, they were cut to the heart, you know. Then they realized what they did, and this caused a change in their, in their heart. And then... And then they ask Peter, what, what should they do? And then he says, repent and be baptized. So then he says, repent and be baptized. Um, 
kind of says that together, so I don't know. I've always been kind of confused on this, like, because repenting, it's not really an act, like, you don't really, like, there's no amount of repenting that you're supposed to do before you get baptized. It just kind of says repent. Maybe you're always supposed to be repenting. Well, yeah. Right. But anyway, it just kind of has some, some steps before that. The definition of repent is feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. And I just did that, so that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, that's just some steps. It's nice. And then it talks about what you get after baptism. I think where the question comes from of like, does getting baptized save you? Like, where did that question come from for me? Where that came from was, I feel like, and this is could be just from my experience in the church with just not being explained too clearly, mm -hmm. but like the process before I was like, yeah, repent and then be baptized, right? So there has to be a change of heart, like you were saying, where repentance, you have to have that change of heart first, right? In order to really even have any kind of connection to this, right? Mm -hmm. This commitment that you'd be making to Christ. But then the actual, like, confession, Jesus is Lord of my life, and then you get baptized, you participate in that crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Christ, right? And then now you are born again, you are washed by the blood of Christ through baptism, you are born again into a new person and you are now mm -hmm. continuously living a life that is different right mm -hmm. i understand that and i understood that when i got baptized but i think something that was never explained to me was what happens after that because a lot of times i see in the church where we'll be really invested in someone we'll be like in their studies we'll be praying with them we'll be like texting them calling them like getting time with them and then once they get baptized it's like well they're good off to the next person mm -hmm. and it's like well what happens with that person like you know what I mean they're still a sinner yeah. Yeah. they can still fall into temptation they can still you know what I mean be mm -hmm. very very riddled with sin mm -hmm. right so I think like the question is like well okay they got baptized though so then I feel like there needs to be a conversation like okay what is the rest of your life gonna look like because yeah. I've always been explained it as is that the baptism isn't the finish line the baptism is the gun going off for the race to start Mm -hmm. So then where is all of the, the, you know what I mean, the support mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the meeting with each other after that? I don't know. That's just what I've seen all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I think that's just where it comes from. And, and then I see a bunch of people, like, fall after that. And then they, like, leave. You know what I mean? Especially, yeah. especially people who got baptized, like, super young. I'm not saying you. I'm saying, like, I've seen so many people get baptized really young and just, like, fall away. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think that's where my question came from. Of like, okay, I understand baptism, it says here, saves you. Mm -hmm. But how is it that so many of my friends, I don't see them anymore. They've left God. They've left the church and they've left God. Even though they were baptized. So obviously, there's it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you have to continuously live that life. So I think that's where it came from for me, where I was like, well, does baptism really save you? Because people get baptized all the time and then they don't actually, like, end up, you know what I mean? There's, like, the yeah. whole term of, like, falling away. So they fell away. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Where's that, like, talked mm -hmm. about in here? You know what I mean? What happens then? What do you do? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have, like, a scripture for this, for what I'm about to say, but kind of the way I've learned about it or learned it to be is... Um, like how does God judge you you know on the final days like what does he judge you by like because right. you know you've been baptized and saved your sins are forgiven you know he's not going to judge you by your sins anymore because Jesus took those sins on himself mm -hmm. so what is he judging you by I'm pretty sure he, he judges you by kind of like your heart and the way that um, you live your life so by works the way you live your life? So, is, is that a work? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of it as then? To what I just said. Well, I don't want to put you down the path of, again, of like, oh, I need to do this to prove to God that I'm like still a Christian 
and then I still like I like oh if I do something wrong I need to punish myself so that God like I don't want that oh to yeah be the, yeah but if we could all turn to what is it James um James two fourteen to twenty six I don't know if we're gonna read all of this but okay so I want I want to read this one and then another one in Luke so. <clears throat> Let's just go around reading it again. Catalina, could you read verse 14, and then we'll go around. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is it? So also faith by itself, if it is not done with works, is dead. Uh, skip me, my Bible's not working. Aww. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe... Wait, I need to read that again. But someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that, and shudder. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Okay, we'll just read up to there. I feel like okay. we've kind of got that covered. Okay. So, you know, like, works, that can, like, even our greatest virtues can be turned into vices, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. we, can, we can do works, but then we can also boast about them, which is what the Bible tends to safeguard us against. Right. But if you don't live a life that is reflective of your faith in God, then, you know, your, your faith is dead. Right. Your faith is it dead. It questions the genuinity of your faith. Yeah. yeah.